Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Hearty welcome to the Eucharist as we continue our journey in Lent, walking towards Holy Week, going slowly towards Good Friday, and excitedly towards Easter Sunday. We begin the sacrifice, putting ourselves in God's presence, asking his forgiveness for our sins. I confess to Almighty to God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Can you sit for the readings? A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks be to God.
together. You, Lord, have the message of eternal life. The law of the Lord is perfect. It revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives wisdom to together. You, Lord, have the message of eternal life. The precepts of the Lord are right. They gladden the heart. The command of the Lord is clear. It gives light to together. You, Lord, have the message of eternal life. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are true, and all of them joy. All together, you Lord have the message of eternal life. They are more to be desired than gold, than the purest of gold, and sweeter are they than honey, than honey from. All together, you Lord have the message of eternal life. A reading from the first letter of Saint Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. A stumbling block to the Jews and folly to Gentiles but to those who are called both Jews and Greeks Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God for the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men the word of the Lord thanks be to God and he stand for the gospel. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. All together. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting there and making a whip of cords he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep 
and the oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. So the Jews said to him, what sign do you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple. Will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus on his part did not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to bear witness about man for he himself knew what was in man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, we are continuing our journey in this Lenten season We've got the first Sunday, we are on the third Sunday of Lent. We accompany Jesus into the desert. The desert for discernment, for prayer, to see our direction of life as Jesus did. We came to the second Sunday, last Sunday. Jesus went up to the mountain and was transfigured and the voice came from above, the father's voice this is my son, my beloved, listen to him we go to the mountain to listen to hear what God is telling us continuing our retreat and today the third Sunday we come to the temple where Jesus goes and cleanses it. The temple which is the house of God, the presence of God. The temple which was built, uh, the ref there's reference over here, for 46 years, that was really the 46 years that Herod took, Herod the great Herod really who was the one who killed the innocents, he, his, the temple was being built even after he died. It took 46 years to renovate it. The first temple was built by Solomon. That was the great temple. It was raised when we had the uh, Babylonian invasion and there was, they were completely, the temple was completely destroyed. Jerusalem was destroyed, 587. And we have in Ezra, Nehemiah, Another rebuilding of a temple, but they all said, scriptures say, it was much smaller than Solomon's temple. And the scriptures always said that the Messiah will come and build a temple more splendid than the temple of Solomon. Because the prophets were speaking of the temple of the person of Jesus. And uh, Herod, to show the people that he was the Messiah, decided to rebuild the temple. So he did it marvelously. He had a court of the Gentiles done where people, even lots of non-Jews would come on the time of the Passover to pray to God. There were many people, God-fearing people, who came to pray to God. They, they believed that the God of the Jews was a true God and they came there. But they could not enter uh, where the, which was a place which was reserved for the Jews. So there was a court of the Gentiles. Uh, we have... Uh, congregation from Rome, the dicastery of the culture, which had many programs for the court of the Gentiles, like where how other people also who are not believers, not Christians, can also draw
from the scriptures, from the church, his wisdom, from uh, the gospels, really, essentially, the court of the Gentiles. So this is really the origin of the court of the Gentiles. Now, this is where the court of the Gentiles was where really all these money changers and sheep and oxen were, which Jesus uh, knocked off. And in a way, it was a necessary service. As I mentioned before, the temple is the only place where true sacrifice could be offered, not in the synagogue. Synagogues were assembly places where they met and shared the word of God, had uh, prayers and read psalms, but sacrifice only by the priests and only in the temple. In this, this temple over here, there was an altar of sacrifice, there was a big lavabo where they washed their hands before going to sacrifice. Now the sacrifice could be oxen, could be sheep, could be goat, could be pigeons, uh, but they had to be, according to the regulations, completely unblemished. You couldn't offer to God something which was blemished, had a defect, a lame uh, sheep or a, a blind goat. Everything he had to be completely, really, fully integral and had to be certified. That's why no one would bring from far off all their animals because it was difficult, they could get hurt on the way, injured on the way. So they would only, they would have them ready there for the convenience. So people would come and buy the animals from there, so they're necessary. Uh, they would probably charge exorbitant prices, they had the monopoly. And the money changes again was a necess uh, necessary uh, service that they had to provide. Because the, the coins had the image of Caesar stamped on them, imprinted on them, and this was considered by the Jews um, idolatry. Sort of in a sense, and therefore they, that could not be accepted in the temple for any exchange. Therefore, they had they had their own coins, which without any image of anybody, and so that was a necess necessary service. Also, this, but then they were so many making noise, making marketplace, etc. Uh, Jesus uh, takes a whip and whips them out, throws them out. This incident of Jesus cleansing the temple, brothers and sisters, is there in all the four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. But although we are in the year of Mark, the lectionary has chosen uh, the Gospel of John for today. So it's from John that we are reading. John who uh, has got the aspect of God. Jesus is the Son of God, the divinity of Jesus which he acts. Each, each uh, evangelist has got his own thrust. He's a, John, as we said, is a mystic and wants to communicate that to the people. But coming back to Jesus cleansing the temple. He has come to purify the world by his passion, by his death, by his resurrection. As we hear in the second reading of uh, today's Mass, St. Paul to the Corinthians. Let's come back to the cleansing. The continuation of uh, Jesus is you and me, each one of us. The continuation of Jesus is the church. And the church needs cleansing also, our church also. And therefore we've got to be instruments of the cleansing of the church. The leaders of the church, the bishops, that's what the Pope Holy Father is continuously doing, trying to see how we could be, the church could be more and more the face of Jesus, taking away, cleansing, taking away everything that could tarnish the image of the church. Regrettably, different parts of the world, also in India, we've had cases which are not really gospel, according to the gospel. We've had cases of abuse of minors. You have cases sometimes of uh, abuse of money and therefore it's so important this time as we think of the cleansing that we see ourselves also as instruments really ensuring that there is no nothing in the church which is not the image of Jesus the face of Jesus Pope Francis has consistently been working on this for the last several years five or six years every year bringing in something more to try to make sure that the church becomes more in Jesus. We see that in this great emphasis on 
welcome to the migrants, service to the poor, priority to those who are suffering, uh, making the church a field hospital. But that's of course the church. More important for us, you and for me, you and me, as we continue our journey into in Lent, is to examine ourselves. We are also the temple of God by our baptism, by our confirmation, by receiving the Jesus, Jesus the Eucharist regularly, we become more and more the temple of God. And what has to be cleansed in my person? That is really what we are called to examine today, this last week continuously, we are saying that during the gospel commentaries, gospel homilies, to examine ourselves. The first reading of today is from Exodus where Moses has given the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments from God of how we are to live our life. And this, these are the criteria by which we examine our lives. Uh, obligation to God, obligation to the others. Where have we sinned? Jesus, as we know, we've learned that continuously deepen the meaning of the commandments. The Beatitudes are the commandments lived to the core, lived in spirit. We shouldn't be just satisfied with negatively, I have not killed anybody, I have not committed adultery, I have not stolen anything. But Jesus says, even if you are angry, you have sinned. Even if you lust with your heart, you have sinned. Even if you have been uncharitable, unjust, you have sinned. And therefore, the, that's the criteria as we progress in sanctity that we've got to examine ourselves. I've been repeatedly speaking this last week of the sacrament of reconciliation because this is the period in Lent when I invite you, we invite ourselves, invite myself to go for our confession, to go to the sacrament of reconciliation. It gives peace, it gives union with God, it cleanses this temple, take the whip and whip out all the money changers, the traders from our, in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds that prevent us from coming closer to the Lord. All commentators say that really these people, as I mentioned before, were doing a service, money changers and go, or those selling goats and sheep and oxen, but they prevented the other people from coming closer to God, prevented the Gentiles because of their noise and chatter and confusion and arguments from really coming there to pray to God. What is it in your life, in my life, that prevents us coming to God, talking to God, coming closer to Him? We examine that, examining that, my sisters and brothers, we take a decision on what we've got to do about it and I invite you, I urge you this time as we approach Easter, let's make our peace with God, come closer to God. If because of different circumstances you are unable to go for sacramental confession, make an act of perfect contrition, ask God's forgiveness and then let's go ahead, growing in holiness as we approach Monday Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. God bless you. Let's take the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From, From there he will come, come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In today's Gospel we read how Jesus drove out the money changers and the dealers from the temple in Jerusalem. As Christians we recognize that each one of us by our baptism are temples of God. May the Lord help us to remove all obstacles of our discipleship of the Lord. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Kindly repeat. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop Oswald Cardinal Gracious, bishops all over the world, that they lead the church on the part of repentance and renewal. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As Pope Francis visits Iraq these days, we pray that his journey be a safe one and that his message of peace contributes to bringing reconciliation to the people of that war-torn nation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On International Women's Day, on the 8th March, we ask the Lord to bless all women so that their important role in the world be recognized and appreciated. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. As the coronavirus vaccination program gathers momentum throughout the world, we pray for efficient administration and understanding so that those who are most vulnerable and impoverished will not be overlooked in favor of the rich and powerful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. We remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. I invite you to pray very specially for the safety of the Holy Father who is in Iraq. Security concerns are there. Pray that everything go off well successful, peaceful, and help in bringing peace to that area. Father in heaven, bless us with the gifts of repentance and mercy during this season of Lent. Give us the grace to live our Christian life worthy of our calling. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through goodness with this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness with this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, to become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all is holy church. Through these sacred gifts we pray, O Lord, may our redemption yield its fruits, restraining us from unruly desires, leading us onward to the gifts of salvation. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to things that eternally endure. So with all the angels and saints, we praise you. Without end, we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and you make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints 
on whose constant intercession we rely for help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the, vision, the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, God is our Father, loving Father, merciful Father. Let's pray to him now with faith and confidence. Our, our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, at your apostles, I leave you peace by peace I give you. Look not on our sins but the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. It's also the sign of peace. Christ peace be with you. Lamb of Lamb God. God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof. roof. Don't only say, say the word, word my, soul my soul shall, shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you, to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O divine guest, Give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. 
as we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while on earth with the bread that comes from on high we humbly entreat you O Lord that what is being brought about us in, mis in mystery may come to true completion we make this prayer through Christ our Lord Amen a special prayer for Lent direct O Lord we pray the hearts of your faithful and in your kindness grant your servants and handmaids this grace that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commandments. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Have a lovely Sunday. We are in the middle of Lent, about halfway through our journey for Easter. We we'll pray for each other and this is the time for the sacrament of reconciliation. I want to remind you also to pray for the Holy Father who is now in Iraq and will soon return back to Rome, hope safely. God bless you. Pray for each other. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, Hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic. We pray that the vaccine be available for all our people, even the poor and those in rural areas. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>